We have several eruptions in the sourcing volcanic system, and none of them actually have threatened the Blue Lagoon and the sourcing itself in the term that they erupt under it. Blue Lagoon is a world famous first class uh, spa, hotel, restaurant uh, complex. And it accepts guests from all around the world. Anybody who goes to Iceland definitely visits Blue Lagoon. So important also in that sense. When we have the magma uh, accumulating under the Swartzengi, always we see that after a while it drains in another location as an eruption. So in this case, in the latest one in February 2024, we saw that the magma erupted under the another location nearby in the uh, Sundunka craters. As you can see here in this diagram, the blue part shows that the drainage of the magma and the red part shows that the eruption. And in all the risk assessments that we had so far, Blue Lagoon and Swartzengi were not threatened. The only time that we had a tongue of lava from the following the slope of the ground came around the blue uh, Swartzengi and actually was stopped by the wall. It didn't reach even there. And there is a theory to actually explain this. Why Blue Lagoon and Swartzengi themselves are not a victim of eruption from within that area. This theory says the storms of the earthquake, which start uh, in that region and magma accumulation under the Swartzengi, actually compacts the cracks and the fractures and fault lines under the Swartzengi and Blue Lagoon itself. Like what you see here, we have uplift and then f downfall, uplift, downfall. All this uplift and downfall actually has closed down the cracks and the fractures that can actually be a pathway for the um, magma. Magma needs to melt the rock the, through the earthquakes. But this area is all the time compacted, like a compactor that we use. The earthquakes and storms of an earthquake act like a vibration plate of a compactor, practically closing the fractures, fault lines, everything that uh, when the magma wants to rise to the surface, it stops the movement of the magma upward under the Swartzengi itself, but because the area around it has active fault lines, the ones that are open in the mid-oceanic reach, they are not compacted and they are a pathway for the magma to rise to the surface. We look at this and you can see here also Blue Lagoon earthquakes are not actually those ones related to the rising of magma, are not actually on the Blue Lagoon or sourcing itself. This is the moment the dike is active and the dike wants to rise pathway. And this is the zipper effect. When we have the eruption, for example, in the um, December, then January, then February, all the time this movement of the plates creates at the edges this kind of eruptions. The crest of these fault lines you see here between those uh, eruption points is actually safe because there is nothing there to actually, there is no pathway for the magma. The magma rises through the veins, through the cracks, upward and erupts but not through the crest. That's the compacted part. This is again in this model you see that under Sorsing and Blue Lagoon we have the Lacolith forming. It's compacted, it cannot rise from there, so horizontally it moves and find a pathway through the fault lines and around. This is the pattern we have seen through the uplift uh, data that we have from the GPS data all the time. We have seen this pattern. Magma rises under the Blue Lagoon and Sorsing, then flows sideways and then erupts either in this system, Swartzengi, or maybe next time somewhere else, like Eldorf volcanic system, or like the one that we have, Vegardesville volcanic system, but not under Swartzengi and Blue Lagoon itself. That explains why there is no eruption in the Blue Lagoon.